solar power, in Michigan, my brother David's laughter echoed through our parents' kitchen. Better hope those panels can run on rain and snow, little sister. I kept my focus on my laptop screen, where complex engineering diagrams filled the display. Five years of research, three pending patents, and a revolutionary energy storage system. But all my family saw was their naive little sister chasing impossible dreams. She's been like this since graduation. My sister Samantha chimed in, stirring her coffee. How long are you going to waste Dad's investment money on this fantasy, Caroline? What they didn't know was that Dad's initial $50,000 investment was already paying off. The prototype in my garage was exceeding all expectations, and three major venture capital firms were quietly competing for a chance to fund full-scale production. At least get a real job while you're working on this project, Mom suggested gently. Anderson Electronics is always hiring engineers, and with your MIT degree. I have a real job, I interrupted, running my own company. David snorted. Two employees in a garage isn't a company. It's a hobby that's burning through Dad's retirement fund. If only they knew those two employees were Dr. James Chen, former head of energy research at Tesla, and Dr. Sarah Martinez, who'd written her dissertation on the very technology we were perfecting. They both left prestigious positions to join my hobby, believing in my vision of revolutionizing renewable energy storage. The prototype testing is almost complete, I said, trying to keep my voice level. We're looking at production facilities now. Production facilities. Samitha laughed. For what? Solar panels that might work three months out of the year. I closed my laptop, tired of the same old arguments. They've been dismissing my work ever since I'd turned down a six-figure job at Google to start Nova Energy Solutions. Even Dad, who'd believed in me enough to invest initially, was starting to show doubt. You'll see, I said quietly, standing up. Sooner than you think. Later that night, in my company's garage facility, actually a converted warehouse space with state-of-the-art labs, I watched Dr. Chen run another test cycle on our prototype. Numbers are holding steady, he reported, eyes bright with excitement. Energy density is 30% higher than our initial projections. This isn't just revolutionary, Caroline. It's going to change everything. I smiled, remembering all the nights we'd work here, perfecting what everyone else said was impossible. Our system didn't just store solar energy more efficiently. It solved the fundamental problem of renewable energy, consistent power delivery regardless of weather conditions. My phone buzzed. Another message from Morgan Stanley. They were getting aggressive about investment opportunities, especially after their technical team had reviewed our preliminary test data. Goldman Sachs called again. Sarah mentioned, looking up from her computer. They're offering $50 million for a 15% stake. I shook my head, too low, especially with these new efficiency numbers. The truth was, we didn't really need their money. What had started with Dad's investment had grown through careful management and strategic patent licensing. We had enough capital to begin production on our own terms. But we'd need partners for rapid scaling, which was crucial. Climate change wasn't waiting for anyone. Caroline? Sarah's voice pulled me from my thoughts. You should see this. She turned her monitor toward me. On the screen was an internal memo from Anderson Electronics, leaked by one of our industry contacts. They were desperately trying to replicate what they thought was our approach, unaware that we'd taken an entirely different direction. They're so focused on improving traditional storage methods, Sarah said, shaking her head. They don't even realize we changed the fundamental paradigm. I thought about my family's suggestion that I work for Anderson. They had no idea that Anderson's entire research division was frantically trying to catch up to my hobby. The next morning, I had a surprise visitor at the warehouse my father, looking somewhat uncomfortable in the high-tech surroundings. Quite an operation you have here, he said, eyeing the complex equipment. A bit more sophisticated than the garage setup I was picturing. Did you think I was building science fair projects with your investment? He had the grace to look embarrassed. Your siblings mean well. They're just worried about you throwing away a promising career on, well, on what, Dad? On solving one of the biggest challenges in renewable energy, on building something that could help address climate change. Before he could respond, Dr. Chen emerged from the lab area. Caroline, the latest stability tests are complete. We're seeing zero degradation after 10,000 cycles. He noticed my father and extended his hand. Dr. James Chen, you must be Mr. Adams. 
Your daughter is doing remarkable things here. Dad's eyes widened as he recognized the name. Dr. Chen, from Tesla, you work here? Left a division chief position to join Caroline's team, James confirmed. Best decision I ever made. What she's developed, it's going to revolutionize the industry. I led Dad through the facility, explaining our technology in terms he could understand. His expression shifted from skepticism to amazement as he saw the scale of what we built. But why all the secrecy? He asked finally. Why let everyone think you're just tinkering in a garage? Because right now, everyone's looking in the wrong direction, I explained. While they're trying to improve existing technology, we've developed something entirely new. By the time they figure it out, we'll be too far ahead to catch. And my investment? I pulled up our financials on a nearby screen. As he studied the numbers, his face went pale. This, this can't be right. These projections. Are conservative, I finished. We're in talks with three major manufacturers. Once production begins, those numbers will likely double. He sat heavily in a nearby chair. Your siblings, we've all been wrong about what you're doing here. Yes, I said simply, you have. That evening, another family dinner. But this time, something was different. Dad sat quietly, watching me with new eyes as David and Samantha launched into their usual mockery. Still chasing the solar dream, David asked, smirking. How's that working out in this weather? I took a sip of water, thinking of the meeting I had scheduled for tomorrow with the Department of Energy. They'd seen our test results and were talking about fast-tracking regulatory approval. It's working out just fine, I replied calmly. In fact, we're starting production next month. Samantha nearly choked on her wine. Production? Of what? You'll see it on the news soon enough. Oh, this should be good, David laughed. Little Caroline's garage project goes public. Need any investors? I've got some spare change I wouldn't mind losing. Dad cleared his throat. Actually, son, I don't think Caroline needs any more investors. Do you, sweetheart? I smiled, checking my phone as another message from Morgan Stanley came in. Their latest offer, $200 million for 10% of the company. No, Dad, I said quietly, I really don't. The morning of our public launch, I stood in my office overlooking the production floor of our new facility. Below, rows of our revolutionary energy storage units waited to be unveiled to the world. Each one represented thousands of hours of work, countless sleepless nights, and years of enduring my family's mockery. The press is starting to arrive, Sarah reported, tablet in hand. CNN, Bloomberg, Reuters. They're all here, and you should see the stock market. Clean energy shares are going crazy just on rumors about our announcement. I nodded, adjusting my blazer. Any word from Anderson Electronics? Their CEO just arrived, looking rather nervous. I smiled, thinking of all their failed attempts to replicate what they thought we were doing. Today, they finally see how far behind they really were. My phone buzzed, Samantha calling for the third time this morning. I let it go to voicemail, just like the dozen messages from David. They'd seen the business news headlines. Revolutionary clean energy announcement expected from Nova Energy Solutions. The technology we were unveiling would change everything. Our storage system didn't just work in any weather. It was cheaper, more efficient, and more durable than anything on the market. We'd already secured contracts with major utilities across the country. By the end of the year, the first cities would be running entirely on renewable energy using our technology. Caroline, my assistant knocked softly. Your family is here. All of them. I took a deep breath. Show them to the VIP seating area. Front row. The presentation was scheduled for 10 a.m. At 9.55, I peeked through the curtain at the packed auditorium. Industry leaders, government officials, and media filled every seat. In the front row, my family sat looking somewhat shell-shocked as they took in the scale of the event. At exactly 10, I walked onto the stage. The room fell silent. Five years ago, I began, everyone said it was impossible. That solar power couldn't be reliable enough. That storage technology wasn't advanced enough. That renewable energy would always be a supplement to fossil fuels. I clicked a button, and behind me, a massive screen showed real-time data from our test facilities. They were wrong. Today, Nova Energy Solutions is proud to introduce the future of clean energy. For the next hour, I laid out exactly what we'd accomplished. The revolutionary storage technology. The unprecedented efficiency rates.
the contracts already signed with major utilities, the production facilities ready to begin mass manufacturing. By the end of next year, I concluded, the first cities in America will be running on 100% renewable energy, 24 hours a day, regardless of weather conditions. And that's just the beginning. The room erupted in applause. In the front row, my family sat frozen. David's mouth hung open. Samantha's face had gone pale. Dad just smiled, nodding proudly. The press conference that followed was chaos. Questions about the technology, the contracts, the financial projections. Yes, we were already profitable. Yes, we had orders worth billions. Yes, I was now one of the youngest billionaires in the country. Finally, as the crowd began to disperse, my siblings approached the stage. Caroline, David started, his voice strained. We had no idea. I mean, this is incredible. Listen, I've been thinking, with my business experience, I could really help with. Let me stop you right there, I interrupted. Both of you have spent years mocking this company, calling it a hobby, a fantasy, a waste of time. But we didn't know, Samantha protested. If you just told us what you were really working on, would it have mattered? You didn't believe in me. You didn't believe in clean energy. You didn't believe in any of this. We were wrong, David admitted. But we're family. Surely that counts for something. I looked at them thoughtfully. You know what? You're right. Family does count for something. Their faces lit up with hope. So I'm going to give you both an opportunity, I continued. Entry-level positions. Same as any other applicant. You'll start at the bottom, earn every promotion, and prove yourselves just like everyone else. Entry level? Samantha sputtered. But I have an MBA from, take it or leave it, I said firmly. But understand this, if you accept, you'll be employees. Not executives, not advisors. Employees who will be held to the same standards as everyone else. They exchanged glances, swallowing their pride. When can we start? David asked quietly. One year later, I stood in that same office, watching our expanded production floor hum with activity. We'd grown from two employees in a garage to over 5,000 across three facilities. Our stock price had tripled since the IPO. Cities around the world were adopting our technology. David worked in sales, learning the technology from the ground up. He'd actually become quite good at explaining our systems to potential clients though his initial arrogance had earned him some hard lessons from his supervisor. Samantha started in project management, where her MBA finally proved useful, once she learned to listen to the engineers and scientists she worked with. She'd recently earned her first promotion through genuine merit rather than family connections. Ms. Adams. My assistant interrupted my thoughts. Anderson Electronics is on line one. I think it's their fourth buyout offer this month. I smiled, remembering Mom's suggestion that I work for them. Tell them the same thing as always, Nova Energy Solutions isn't for sale at any price. My phone buzzed with a text from Dad. Proud of you, sweetheart, not just for what you built, but for how you built it. Later that day, during our weekly executive meeting, I watched David give a sales presentation while Samantha shared project timelines. They were different people now, humbler, harder working finally understanding what it meant to earn success, rather than expect it. Impressive progress, I told them afterward. Keep this up and you might make management in a few years. A few years? David looked pained, then caught himself. I mean, yes, of course. Thank you for the opportunity. Samantha just nodded, having learned the value of listening more and talking less. As they left my office, I thought about how far we'd all come. My siblings had finally learned that success comes from innovation and hard work, not mockery and entitlement. I had proven that believing in yourself matters more than having others believe in you. And somewhere in Michigan, solar panels were powering thousands of homes through rain, snow, and darkness, proving that sometimes the craziest dreams are the ones most worth pursuing. The next morning, I called an all-hands meeting, standing on a podium overlooking thousands of employees, including my once skeptical siblings. I announced our next innovation, a breakthrough in fusion energy technology. They say it's impossible, I told the crowd. They say it's decades away. They say it can't be done. I paused, meeting my siblings' eyes in the audience. They weren't laughing anymore. But that's what they said about us five years ago, and look where we are now. The room erupted in applause. In the back, I spotted Dad wiping tears from his eyes. Mom was beaming with pride. 
Even Anderson Electronics CEO was there, probably planning another buyout offer. But I wasn't focused on them. I was watching my siblings, who now understood what I'd known all along. The best revenge isn't proving others wrong. It's proving yourself right over and over again. As I left the stage, David caught up with me. Hey, about all those times I laughed at your hobby. I cut him off with a smile. Water under the bridge. But you might want to pay attention to the fusion project. Could be another one of my crazy, impossible ideas that just might work. He nodded earnestly. Oh, I'm done doubting you. In fact, I've already signed up for night classes in nuclear physics. That's when I knew my siblings had truly changed. Success hadn't just transformed my company, it had transformed my family. And that, even more than the billions of the technological breakthroughs, might be my greatest achievement yet.